Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today we got a pull your ass 440 here. That's a Pro X 440, well, otherwise known as a No X right now because she no start. So uh, let's see if we can get this sucker going. All right, buddy dropped the sucker off. Says he had her here almost two years ago or something like that for us to get her going and I don't remember it but uh, you know it's here again so let's see says it won't start can't get her going or something like that so let's uh, have a little look at this beauty 440 reed valve that's your fan cooled variety of engine which I kind of like the classic 550s are really nice too but uh, I've never really ridden a 440 fanner so uh it'll be nice to get the sucker going and see what she does pretty clean i mean it's got some dirt and whatnot in here but this thing has not been overly abused by the looks of it so i think what we'll do is uh maybe do the general check for spark and whatnot but or we could just say hey grab the happy handle give her a couple of tugs and just uh, see if this guy's really telling the truth maybe she'll spark up for us who knows beyond Tether in, choke down. One more. Two more. Let's go. Nope. Well, maybe the 440 stands for it'll start after the fourth or 40th pull. I don't know. All right, well, we're going to have to uh, pull the bogeys out, make sure we got some spark. And uh, here's my get any snowmobile going kind of starter kit there. You got uh, a pair of side cutters if you just need to cut any zip ties. or They're also good for undoing the spring clamps on some of the fuel lines and whatnot. Obviously got my handy dandy hose pliers, spark plug, wrench and ratchet. And, you know, beautiful pair of uh, pliers from the dollar store. Everybody's got some of those. Can't forget the old staple, this stuff here. If she won't start off of that, she's junk. So, we'll pull the plugs out, see if we got spark first. Tickety-boo. They don't look that old either. Nice and shiny. Yeah, not at old. <laughs> or not old, not old at all. Look at that. So, let's see if they uh, got any spark. Can we see that? Can't really see it, but I can hear it. Come on. Oh yeah. I can hear that just clicking away. Before I go and uh, put the plugs back in, I'm going to go ahead and pull these fuel lines off of here because I am going to load those carburetors right up with the good old brake clean. Good old dollar store clears. The only reason I'm really doing this is because I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to drag it into the shop. I'd rather drive it into the shop. So if we can get her sparked up, that would just be... A bonus. So what you do is you take that awesome brake clean. Got to have the super stick on there. That way you can just stick her down in there. Fill those lines right up. Whoa! These cubators are already full. I wonder if the sucker just needs a little sniff of the brake clean to get her excited. All right, well, those carburetors are obviously full, so let's give her a sniff down each cylinder here. Oh, yeah. There we go. We're just gonna go finger tight for now. We'll see if she sparks up. I can 
can smell the gas and it don't smell good. Well, we know it'll run off the brake clean, but whatever fuel is in there isn't uh, helping it at all. <laughs> and I think from our last video with that ZRT 600, we should investigate the quality of that fuel and also if there's anything hanging out inside here. So, basically, just unplug that fella, this guy here, take the spark plug wires off. Got a little strap back in there. And then this guy should come. Oh, hold on. Boost tubes. Got these little air tubes. Oh, nice one. That was that was tight. We got one more. Where is it? Right there. Come here, you. Boom shakalaka. Okay. No, free and clear. No uh, critters, squirrels, or mice living down in there. So, this thing is pretty clear. Oh, there is some signs of some mice or something doing a little bit of jazz down in there. But, uh, alright, well, hey, at least now we can just spray the brick clean right in here and see if we can keep her going that way. Okay, so I pulled these two, I don't know if you can see it, that one there, that one there. Those are the little drain tubes off the bottom of the carburetors. When I pulled that one off, nothing came out of it until I took the uh, main line off the pump, blew into here, and then so that needle was stuck. So I got those drained. I'm going to fill these guys up with brake clean, got the fuel shut off. So hopefully I can fill the uh, bowls of the carburetors up, give her a little squirt down the uh, bogey holes. This thing should fire up and run long enough to drive it in the shop because I do not want to keep working outside in the cold. I'd rather work in there where it's nice and warm. Okay, carburetors are filled with brake clean. So the cylinders, air box is back on. Fuel lines are disconnected. Hopefully, one tug, she fires up. Get her in the shop where it's warm. Well, we got her back inside the shop now where it's nice and warm. It was wet rain and all that starting outside. So we're not getting winter here from the looks of it for a while because we get a little bit of snow. We do, you know, we had the ZRT out trying it, which uh, didn't work out good for it. But uh, whatever, that's another story. But uh, now, you know, it looks like we might lose some snow again. So we want to get the SRX and those other sleds out and going so we can do some test rips and, you know, see how fast they go, all that kind of jazz. But... Until we get good weather, we're just farting around with old junk like this, so <laughs> get this going. We're in here nice and warm. Everything I did outside there was just to get it in here so I didn't have to blow a nut or throw my back out pulling and pushing this thing around. So we know it runs, the brake clean and the carburetor and all that, everything works good that way. So just going to pull it back apart, get the air box out of there, pull the carbs off, we'll clean them. I'm going to drain, I got my siphon hose there, we'll drain the fuel out of that tank because we know it's junk. And after going by <laughs> the ZRT and finding the surprise in that fuel tank there, you know, it's a great idea. Obviously, if this thing hasn't been running for this guy for a while, there's probably all kinds of junk inside that tank. So we'll get that out, siphon her out into some old race fuel cans, 
That way we can dispose of it and not reuse it and anything else, get it mixed up with a regular jerry can of gas. And then we'll carry on. We'll pull the belt off of this too. So when we do get her up and going, it doesn't pew across the shop and smash into nothing. So let's fart around with this. got this fancy siphon hose, a bunch of us bought them at Sledorama there in Peterborough quite a few years back. Oh yeah, the uh, float thingies <laughs> dangling in the bottom of that tank obviously, but uh, these things are good because they got a one-way check valve, so you just drop it in the tank and just keep popping her up. It'll pull the gas up and start your siphon, so let's see. Come on, sucker. You can see that, but that is a good flow right there, safe and good. So we'll get the bulk of it out with this, and then I'll rig up my drill pump with that little hose. We can put it all the way around the bottom and suck every last little bit of junk out of there. And then we'll uh, clean the carbs, put some fresh fuel in it, and this thing should one pull wonder. Like that's moving a lot of fuel. So these things are handy to siphon gas nice and quick. Look at that. Now I just uh, use my stand to lift the back of the sled up so we got a nice good angle there. All the fuel in the tank runs to the front and then I'll stick that uh, little siphon sucky straw for the <laughs> drill pump. We can get all the crap gas out of there and then uh, we can put fresh stuff in her. So we're going to be pulling this all back apart again. So just undo the, uh, pull the one clip out for the belt guard. Get that guy up and out of the way. Now these ones, it's not like that ZRT where you can grab a hold of the helix and just twist and push to get the belt off. But you can still do it without any tools. You just got to have a little bit of brute force. But basically, just put some pressure on the belt, grab the back sheave, give her a twist, push down on the belt at the same time, and then all you gotta do is just pull the belt right out of there, without any tools, out of there. Then you can inspect the belt, oh, this one does not look in that good a shape, I'm gonna say he's gonna need a belt as well. And then we just go back to pulling the air box out again. All right, so the air box is just like a witness in a mafia trial. It's out of the way, forget about it. Now to get the uh, cuberators out of there, pretty straightforward. All we gotta do is uh, undo the caps for the slides, pull them out, hang them off to the side. The, uh, we'll pull the fuel lines off. I'm gonna leave the fuel lines attached to the carburetors just so later I can uh, fill them up to uh, Fill the bowls, check the, make sure the needle and seat's sealing. So we'll take them off. We already had them off at the pump, so they should come off easy there. Get yourself super handy for working on snowmobiles, on the carburetors and all that. Long shanked, good quality Phillips screwdriver. That way you can get all the way down there. Got to get the uh, clamp that holds the carburetor to the intake, both sides. Then there'll be the little... Oil line on these ones, sometimes not every carburetor has them, sometimes some of the older Yamahas and stuff like that, they go right to the uh, reed cage or the carb boot there. Um, and then a 12 mil wrench, undo the uh, choke plunger. Just get down on there with the 12 mil. I'm pretty sure almost every single choke plunger on all the carburetors for any snowmobile are 12 mil, but I could be wrong. Crack that sucker loose. And you just spin her out. And then before you go and yank it right out of there, word of advice, go to your uh, choke plunger, flip that sucker on. That way it'll pull the spring tight, pulls the plunger back in. That way, if this thing's loose, I'll show you here, hold on. 
that's with the choke off and this is loose if you just leave this dangling around in the engine bay the plunger could fall off of there and then you lose the plunger and the spring and your willingness to finish the job because you'll spend the rest of your day looking for that so just flip that choke on see if i can multitask here pull it in that way you can shake that sucker all over it ain't going nowhere same thing with these caps, just spin the sucker loose, pull her on out of there, set her off to the side. These little oil lines are pretty easy to come off, just pop that little clip off of there, pull the line off, tickety boo. Then get down on that little Phillips screw on the clamp, loosen her up, you don't have to crank her all the way out, just loosen it up nice and good. And just grab a hold of the end of the carburetor, give her a tug, tickety-boo. And just like that, we have carburetor extraction. What's that saying go? One carb in the hands better than two in the bush? I don't know, whatever. Oh, nice one. It's supposed to have little caps on there that hold the floats on, but uh, six mil, quarter inch drive for the main jet. Pull that sucker out of there. Then I got my uh, automatic center punch there. Works good for these ones here. It's got the pin pressed into the towers there to hold the float arm. Oh, taking this guy up. Just pops it out of there. That way you can get to your needle and see, pull the needle out of there. It's got a little spring clip. Come on. Just a tiny little spring clip that, uh, I don't know if that'll focus, holds it in there. Pull that guy out. And then custom screwdriver. I ground down so it would fit in the hole for the pilot too. Get that pilot jet out of there. Just like so. Then we'll uh, spray some cleaner in here, blow it all out, make sure all the passages are good. Probably uh, pull the, uh, we'll thread the uh, air mixture screw. We'll. Uh, turn it in first count how many turns she goes in and then we'll pull it right out clean it blow it all out and then we'll put it back and set it to where it was okay float bowl off a of carburetor number two. Oh, there's a little bit of crap in this one oh yeah that's real good so this one yeah oh look at that nice so we'll have to uh, do a good cleaning on this one too. All right, so we're cleaning the carburetors out. Uh, I've got my Blue Point uh, micro drill bit uh, kit there, perfect for all your pilot jets and main jets. It has a bunch of different sizes there. They come in handy, you can soak these for a bit or if you got one that's really plugged up, you put the little drill bit in there and then you can spin her right through and get that nice and clean. The pilot jet ones, much smaller hole in there, and uh, if it happens, sometimes you either lose or break, or just don't have one that goes small enough. So in that case, if that is happens, then just pull out your handy dandy uh, wire brush, bend one of these little wires, give her a cut. Now it's gonna be kinda hard to see, but there's one of the wires off the brush. Then I just give her a little bit of a bend. There you go, you can see it. Got a bit of a bend on her. Then that way you can take that, feed it through the hole of the pilot. And then you can run that right through. Make sure she's nice and clear. And then same thing, just soak it, blow it out with some brake clean and air, 
should be good to go. And that's why I always hang on to these the super straws there. They come in super handy when you're cleaning the jets and all that. You just put it up against the uh, jet and give her a shot. If she's squirting out of there, you know she's clean. Same thing with the pilot jets. Just kind of hold it up on there. It's shooting right through there. You know, she'll pass gas through there. She'll pass brake clean through there. All right, so jets and everything are all back in the carburetor. This is why I like keeping that uh, fuel line on there. I can fill it up with brake clean, and I can just sit there and uh, watch it. I can close up the uh, needle, open it up, make sure it gets some fuel flowing through there, and then close it, make sure it's going to seal. All right, so I got the fuel lines full right now, and then if I drop that down, fuel comes out, put it back up, shuts off. So that way we know it will seal. It's good to know that now before we put her all back together and find out it doesn't. And I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but installation is opposite of removal. You just, it's got that little groove cut in there. The, oops, there goes my screwdriver. <laughs> the <laughs> mount there has a corresponding groove. So you just gotta push that sucker in Make sure that that carburetor is seated all the way up against it and sitting straight up and down. And then just tighten that clamp back up and then she is mounted. And then just hook all the other lines back up, put your uh, round slide back in. These could only go one way. That's your angled uh, slot there for your idle screw. Other side has a slot the whole way. There's a tab on the inside of the carburetor there a little notch that lines up with that groove in the slide so she will only go that way and it is most very very important not to forget to hook this oil line back up because if you do it's gonna be frowny faces all around go ahead ask me how i know dropping the air box back in is not too bad you just gotta kind of the sticker back line her up a little bit hardest part about it is the uh, boots that are supposed to go over top of the carburetors there you just got to get it lined up close enough it'll sit down in kind of where it's supposed to be oh yeah pull the uh, fuel line out of there that's not supposed to be in there and then super duper handy must have is get yourself a long shank handle right angle pick that way you can get right down in there and work that sucker right around the carburetor otherwise some of these some snowmobiles are harder than others but you can struggle for an eternity trying to get those on it's all back together just threw the carburetors back on put the air box, air box back in there Left the belt off for safety purposes, just in case she goes to the moon. So this sucker should go. Don't, shouldn't even need that.
Well, back from a quick little rip. Seemed to work okay. I mean, got it nice and hot. Wouldn't be riding a liquid-cooled one out in those conditions. I mean, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot of snow out in the fields and whatnot. And it is raining right now, but this one being a fanner, it'll stay nice and cool. No problem. So we're just testing on it, right? So, but, uh, you know, worked pretty good. And I mean, you can't complain about that. So it seems to be running good and strong. You know, the fellow dropped this off. He said he brought it here like a year and a half or close to two years ago and said that uh, I cleaned the carbs on it and did all this for him. And it never really, never worked right since. So heh, try and say that this time, pal. We got video proof of it just ripping. So uh, nice one. You know, it's a pet peeve of mine and I'm sure of many other mechanics. When you work on something for somebody and then they show up like a year and a half later and like, yeah, you clean the carbs on it a year and a half later, and it didn't work as soon as I got it home. Like, why didn't you bring it back right away a year and a half ago instead of waiting and be like, yeah, it never worked? Because guaranteed, probably back then, it did that. One pull, man. Like, <laughs> I mean, mistakes can be made, and you can't account for... Certain variables, you know, maybe there was a piece of dirt or something in the fuel tank from before or whatever. But, I mean, if you take it home and it doesn't do that, how about a phone call, man? Don't wait a year and a half and then show up and be like, oh, yeah, it never worked, right? Nice one. Just to make sure that it doesn't come back a year and a half down the road again for the same issue, I'm going to give it my uh, secret blessing. We'll christen this thing. <laughs> Not sure I can guarantee that it's going to stop it from coming back, but pretty sure it'll guarantee I won't care. <sighs> All right, temperature's dropped. I left the machine outside so it'd get chilled right down. I mean, here's the temperature gun showing you. She's uh, pretty cold outside. And left her up. There's the engine. She's not warmed up at all, it's sitting out there in the cold. Flip the uh, choke all the way. Kill switch up, make sure the throttle's not stuck. Let's give her a tug and see. reading was set in American. I got her in Celsius here and it's like saying it's too cold to even register. <laughs> here, what's it say on my pants? Minus 22 out here. So yeah, minus 20 something out here in Canada and you know choke on, a couple of tugs, that thing fired up, I don't know problem. Would have done it the first or second no problem but I was holding the camera with one hand and pulling it. I wasn't quick enough to get to the throttle to keep her going so I mean I can't complain about that. I mean, that's freaking cold out here, and she's running no problem, so. All right, well, that was a simple one and done, you know. It's <laughs> just like any marketplace ad or whatever. Just needs carb clean, so uh, it did. You know, it uh, some crap fuel in there. Drain that out, clean the carburetors, put her back together. No problem running tickety-boo, so hopefully this time it won't take them a year and a half to try it and be like, oh, it didn't work right away. Hey, I rode it around the field. It works just fine, so uh, should be good to go. If you enjoy the videos we're putting out, uh, you know, c consider subscribing. You know, it helps us out. We'd appreciate it. And, uh, you know, turn the notification bell on. Anytime we upload a video, you'll get her and uh, check her out. Uh, as always, you know, hit the like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And then uh, take her easy.